Hi, my name is Robbie Tung from the product team at HashiCorp. I'm super excited to speak to you today about what we've been working on in the infrastructure product line. And uh, let's just kick it off with uh, Vagrant and Packer. So uh, Vagrant and Packer continue to be some of the most popular OSS tools in the DevOps space, uh, which is probably not a surprise to a lot of people. Vagrant uh, kicking off is uh, one of my introductions to the HashiCorp tool set, as I'm sure it was for quite a lot of people. And today, a huge number of uh, people still use uh, Vagrant uh, to work with a variety of different kinds of environments. Vagrant Cloud, as you can kind of see, has only bolstered that. With Vagrant 2.3, uh, the GA launch for uh, improved triggers and full config uh, disk support, as well as some as enha enhanced security features and Windows support are coming down the line. On Packer, 1.6.4 will kick off a number of releases which are uh, going to focus more heavily on builders and the way they interact with the core Packer experience. We want to ensure a solid flow of the way the most popular builders are used uh, while setting up future functionality for the way people work with non-core builders as well for their own unique environments. These products are important to a lot of people uh, with the way they work today and so that's why we've spent a little bit of time talking about them. But it's also true for Terraform. It's also an important tool that a lot of people use. And Terraform is quite a big product at this point. It's uh, three pieces that we're going to talk about uh, in detail. The open source project, uh, Terraform Enterprise and Terraform Cloud are platform products. And then finally, the Terraform provider ecosystem. So starting with the open source project, it's been a huge couple of months. Uh, with the release of 0 0.12, the team was working hard to stabilize all the functionality and all the features necessary uh, to introduce something like HCL2. They were also working on a lot of important features and have been ever since then as we moved towards 1.0. With 0 0.13 uh, being GA'd, the team is now fully focused on the final steps that take us uh, in that direction to 1.0. One of our core engineers, Kristen, gave a talk on what makes a 1.0 release for us on the Terraform team, and she covered how seriously we take that. With 0.14, we're rounding out a lot of the functionality and changes that we consider core to the infrastructure as code experience, and we'll be looking to get the community's feedback. As always, excited to hear uh, what you think about some of, those, uh, some of those features. After that, we're going to take the necessary stability steps uh, towards moving towards 1.0 uh, in the future. And does that mean that there will be another major release after 0.14? It's hard to say right now, but I'd recommend checking out Kristen's talk for more details about, again, what we think about that. That being said, I kind of want to talk a little bit about some of uh, my favorite features from the 0.13 GA. Module for each and module count functions were the top of the list of things that we wanted to work on after 0.12. Uh, both, unsurprisingly, were at the center of the 0.13 release. The applications for for each uh, are extensive, uh, especially in lots of places where iterating over a set of things is going to be useful. Um, and inside module development, they often become even more powerful. This kind of speaks to the way that we wanted to finish out functionality and code experiences that we started with the introduction of HCL2. It was such a big step forward, uh, and there were so many improvements that went into that uh, language change that we were able to finish out these experiences because of the hard work that went into 0 0.12. A funny thing about uh, for each is that um, Mitchell himself actually was a strong advocate of us closing out uh, for each and counting modules quite soon after 0 0.12. It turns out he has written a few modules in his time at HashiCorp and uh, he definitely wanted to see that functionality in, uh, in the OSS project. Moving on to, I guess, my personal favorite feature, which is uh, variable validation. Quite a weird thing to say, but it's one of my favorite features because of how often I'm able to make mistakes when I'm writing config, uh, just personally. So having one or more uh, validation blocks uh, to be able to go into as much detail as I want as to the kind of validation I want to kick back uh, when I'm trying to like, uh, find, a, like, find a mistake that I've made is really nice. In fact, the example that you can see is the one that we used in the blog post to announce it. And it felt somewhat like a personal attack because this is definitely something I've done a lot, uh, messing up the AMI string. I don't really want to think about how many runs in Terraform Cloud have errored out because I have got that wrong. If the Terraform Cloud team is watching this, please do not tell me. So that's uh, open source. And 
Up next, I'd kind of like to cover a few brief updates about Terraform Enterprise and Terraform Cloud. I want to talk about a history of ter uh, the history of Terraform Cloud because it's, uh, the last year has been quite uh, important for that product. In May of last year, we announced remote state management uh, for everybody on Terraform Cloud. Uh, we spent a lot of time building an enterprise collaboration project uh, around Terraform. And we'd seen a lot of teams get started and have issues uh, when getting running, uh, collaborating on Terraform at scale. The first issue that uh, customers and people usually run into is state management. That's often like the, the first hurdle. And so to test out if other people felt the same way that we felt about this, we launched a free beta where anybody could sign up for Terraform Cloud and get free state management from the SaaS platform. This went really well, and we started to look at a base set of uh, features and functions uh, that would allow teams and solo developers uh, to get started with the best practices for collaborating with Terraform. These included the version control back workflow and the module registry. Uh, these collaboration tools were, again, taken from the things that we'd learned from building the enterprise product and uh, shipping that to customers. Moving on, we then introduced paid functionality with the paid tiers. Uh, the features that went into this were Sentinel, our policy as code uh, language, and cost estimation, as well as the ability to do more concurrent runs on the platform, because at this point, early customers were starting to push the platform further, and this was a functionality that we wanted to offer at that stage. Again, these things were taken with the knowledge of the things that we'd learned from the enterprise platform. At this point, we'd been serving some of the largest businesses in the world with Terraform Enterprise, and so moving into paid functionality was something that we could uh, easily do. That takes us to today, uh, where we've just recently launched uh, the business tier for the Terraform Cloud product. Like with everything, we designed it based on the feedback from our users. Many customers at this point were starting to use Terraform Cloud uh, as a mission critical piece of their kind of infrastructure provisioning story. And that's an amazing thing for us to hear, but it's also a responsibility that we take incredibly seriously. The business tier was built with this in mind. Um, so SSO with Okta and Azure Active Directory, audit logging with uh, Splunk and also with the API endpoints, as well as cloud agents uh, were all rolled into this uh, tier. I'm really excited about the cloud agents because the ability to run Terraform locally and have it work with our platform opens up a lot of possibilities for customers who are running against multiple different environments in different places or just have something really custom in their environment that they want to have Terraform be aware of uh, when it's running. This was a kind of nice switch because we'd started by taking things from the enterprise product and pushing them uh, into cloud uh, to try and iterate. But we're now developing features in cloud, iterating over them quickly, and we're going to be bringing some of them back into the enterprise product. So it's a kind of nice reversal of the way things have worked. And uh, it kind of like rounds out where we are today. Today, Terraform Cloud has seen more activity than we could have possibly dreamed of. Uh, we knew there was definitely uh, going to be demand for collaborating with Terraform. And so we're really excited with all of the usage that we've seen. We're working on the next set of features and functionality uh, to make the experience even better. And so a huge thanks, I guess, to all of our users uh, on the platform today uh, who are helping us make the product better. And on that note, <laughs> straight after this is a talk from Kyle and Petros on the Terraform team called from CLI to Cloud and Back, where they'll be covering some of the things that I've discussed in the open source uh, world, as well as how those work with Terraform Cloud, possibly even delving into some of the new things from 0.14. So definitely catch that. It's going to be a really good way to get more detail, uh, more technical examples of uh, how these features work. So finally, I just want to touch on the Terraform ecosystem. The Terraform ecosystem incorporates our providers uh, and also the modules that people create um, to create de uh, deployable infrastructure patterns with those providers. It's an integral part uh, to the infrastructure as code experience and it has been growing consistently. One of the things that's so great about it is the community. There are a lot of developers out there writing Terraform modules for things that they want to see instrumented with infrastructure as code. And there's even more developers than that writing modules to create those best practice patterns that they can deploy the cool thing about this is that everybody is doing it on the registry. And so new developers coming into this space can benefit from all of the activity and all of the work that's going on there. 
The numbers grow so much actually that it's actually it's hard to do a, a, a slide with the right scale of the numbers because they change so quickly and uh, I guess that's a good problem to have. We're also incredibly fortunate in this space to have working relationships with the largest cloud providers. These partnerships are ensuring a level of collaboration and a quality of an integration that is actually really hard to replicate outside of Terraform. We're working closely with them to ensure that fixes happen uh, for the next releases and to make sure that the bar is always there for anybody who's going to be uh, like using either one of the modules or one of the providers associated with them. We also get to work on larger projects with these partners uh, that will kind of actively improve the quality of the ecosystem as a whole and hopefully we're going to be able to talk more about them throughout the year. However, the biggest increase in providers comes from our community. Uh, the ones I was mentioning earlier who are constantly adding new things every day that they want to instrument. And with that amount of, uh, like, I guess, interaction and attention, we want to make sure that we're setting up for scale uh, with our community. Uh, so we have been doing that in the last few months. In 0 0.13, we added provider source. And this enables a better story for um, declaring the source of your providers explicitly. You can declare whether you want to fetch them uh, from the registry or where you want to fe fetch them from a custom location that makes sense to you. Uh, that combined with the version constraints allows you Terraform config that can be fully explicit from its, uh, about its dependencies. It makes the behavior of a config uh, much more dependable, uh, just predictable in general. And perhaps much more importantly, this functionality kind of sets up the stage for a much larger expansion of the community providers, which we mentioned. With the combination of that plus the new registry and the, like, the work that went into all of this, uh, we were able to launch providers in the registry uh, earlier this year, which showcases not only obviously the top uh, cloud integrations that we have, but the continually growing number of community providers. Uh, like I said before, the community effort is the most important thing about this. Uh, it really is exciting uh, that it's all coming together in the registry, that people can benefit from that. And with the recently redesigned uh, navigation, we've tried to make it even clearer on the registry for new users coming in to understand what they can expect when they're interacting with the provider. We have three tiers, official, verified, and community. Official uh, stating that our engineers will be backing it and they'll be working on that provider. Uh, partner and uh, verified, meaning that you know they can expect support from one of our many partner teams. Uh, it'll be a partner-led effort. And community means that the community is leading the effort on that provider. We're looking to make the registry experience even closer to Terraform Cloud and Terraform Enterprise uh, this year, so please stay tuned for more to come from that regard. So just finally, I want to thank everybody who works on Terraform and uh, everybody who makes this possible, from the engineers, uh, the product people, the designers, the support people, everybody who works on Terraform at HashiCorp. An enormous thank you uh, for everything you've done to make this project great. And then also just the community. The community is such an important part of what we do. The product wouldn't be where it is today without all of the things that the community does to make it great, to push it further, and to continually just give us feedback on ways that we can uh, move that makes sense. And so thank you to everybody involved. It wouldn't be what it is without you and uh, looking forward to seeing you all again next year.